there's um there's an example i don't know if it's in this chapter specifically but if it's later on where he's like saying that like from his experience in the steel mills he saw a wave of technical innovation come in and uh, you know the the managers would tell the steel workers that they were now irrelevant you know they were they were getting fired but then the next wave of innovation was the computer stuff and um the, the same managers didn't allow themselves to be made obsolete by the computers, you know, that like there was, there had, there had to still be a place for them. Um, so that this, that this is, um, it's important. Yeah. It, it's, it's resonant with the work of Feenberg in, in, uh, transforming technology. And it's, um, it's part of like Stafford's like partial and sort of confused class analysis. Um, in, in, in places he recognizes this dynamic very clearly but in other places, he sort of doesn't. Like, I, I, it, he's not not the clearest of sort of um, thinkers when it comes to the class stuff. Um, but it's there. It is definitely there. Like, um, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah. The, when it gets into sort of more concrete examples, he tends to be a little bit better with the class analysis. And when it gets into kind of like woolly abstractions about the public good. Um, he's he, he he's he's not really quite so on point with that, um, but nevertheless, there is a lot of like especially if you read this stuff in terms of what uh, we saw with Feinberg, um, there there is a there is a ton of useful ideas here, um, and just to to clarify this point about the the quill pen administration, um, the problem with applying computers to quill pen administration is that like you just get tons and tons of meaningless data right like like you are you are proliferating the amount of papers and um data sets and uh printouts and um analytical models and all this kind of stuff um the kinds of things that people can kind of do themselves um to some degree using a pen and paper and, and, you know, an abacus or whatever. Um, but just like making more and more and more and more and more of that. Um, uh, and what that ends up doing is overloading the people who are supposed to inter interpret that, uh, paper or that, uh, data. Um, and, and you're aggravating the problem, right? Like, because you are just producing more and more stuff to be analyzed and read, um, rather than reorganizing things so that what is analyzed is analyzed well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the, yeah, the, the regulatory part of the, the, the regulatory system remains impoverished. It's just that it's, it's job has gotten a lot worse. Um, yeah, I mean, it, but like, there's there's an interesting kind of um, it's it's a sort of negation of the accelerationist Landian sort of view of like, oh, you know, computers everywhere, networks, whoa, banking, amazing, you know, foo, look, everything's fast now, and beer is like, nah, yeah, it is, it is very fast and very shiny, but that's bad because um, it's on un wildly unstable and vastly more unstable than it was before, and that that's what. That's what Nick Land loves, right? He loved the instability of it. There's, there's a wonderful mirror relationship here between the, the perspectives <laughs> on the same thing, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think Beer is a much more sober thinker than Land. You know, he's he's got his finger on the pulse of like what the actual underlying information technical dynamics are, which is ironic because that's the thing that Nick claims to have and consistently fucks up. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean Beer. Beer had a lot more experience with actually implementing and analyzing the implementations of these technologies as opposed to someone like Nick Land, who is just a, you know, academic, just kind of looking at isolated reportage and, and uh, pop culture things here and there, right? Like it is the, the, the Landian analysis is very like impressionistic of what was going on, whereas what Beer's talking about is really informed by actual experience with administrative and organizational failure. Yeah. Uh, like, remember the thing from the, the very beginning of the book, though, right? That, like, um, you have to look beyond the appearances and the apparent entities. You have to look at the actual underlying systems. 
Uh, Beer is able to do that because he's not out of his fucking mind on meth, right? Like, whereas, <laughs> whereas yeah. Land, La, I, I, there's just, just beautiful irony in this that like Land claims to be doing that, to be like slipping out of the subjective position and immersing in that kind of uh, techno Delusian nightmare world of interconnected stuff. But he's not. He's he's just he's just taking the impressions at face value, like a like a moron. <laughs> and and uh, our our boy Beer has a, has a much better take on things. I think. Um, yeah, which we we couldn't go one episode without getting a fucking dig in against Land. <laughs> you know. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, there there is no greater burn than that uh, that that graph showing like the value of Bitcoin. It's like the release of his his book on Bitcoin, like celebrating its great great triumphs, was exactly timed to coincide with the crash of the value of Bitcoin. It's like uh, it's so beautiful. Oh boy. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, do we have Do we have much more to cover in this uh, chapter? I think we've we've got most of it. Um. um yeah. I, I I think it might be uh, just uh, a little bit useful to to read this section um, from his notes at the end of the chapter, uh, which says uh, how to use the computer according to cybernetic principles. Uh, so the the positive example, right? Uh, The public is conceived of as a system, a model of which is contained in the computer. The public supplies minimal information, which the computer then synthesizes in the model. This amplifies variety as required to help the public and attenuates variety to help the manager, thereby meeting the requirement of the law of requisite variety for each of them. So the important thing here is that the public supplies minimal information, right? This is very, very different from the way that we typically use computers, right? We, we just want to put sensors on everything, like more sensors. You know, we need, we need, like, you know, this is like the absurdity of the smart home, right? Like, oh, well, we just, need, we just need to put sensors on everything, the Internet of Things. We'll need to do that for everything. We need to have, you know, surveillance systems that just have like visual sensors and audio sensors and 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 you know we need to have uh, fitbits and we need to have uh, every kind of sensor you could possibly imagine at all times in all places collecting all types of information um that is absolutely not what beer is advocating here because he has a certain degree of trust in the lower levels of the system to provide relevant information, <laughs> right? Um, that, you know, the sensor is very much a dumb pipe um, that just gets the information and then that information can be aggregated at higher levels. And that is a kind of model that appeals to a very sort of ignorant administrative mindset, right? Which, which ignores the capacities of the administered, right? Um, And what he is proposing, and and I think he says something to the effect of this, is that, like, we don't need the fanciest whiz-bang computers. We don't need the fanciest sensors. What we need is a good model that is respectful of the capacities of each level of the organization, um, and like, cause you know, he's saying like, well, look, like project Cybersyn, which I was working on, we didn't have good computers. We had these like awful, what is it? Teletype machines, but we were still able to get things done because we, we thought about the model intelligently and we respected the capacities of each level of the system, as opposed to trying to create a centralized bureau that would just collect all of the data from everywhere and then make tons and tons of very complex models that people who are completely isolated from the relevant context would then interpret, which is the general way that we seem to do these things. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's good. <laughs> it's really, really nice stuff. It's, um, I don't know, it, it's just so... It's so promising. It's 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 promising that it's a solution to these sorts of problems that doesn't just involve more of the same. Like of of like oh well, 
if this massive pile of machinery is not working, we need clearly we need tr twice as much, you know, that that kind of shit. Or like, oh, we need, we need even more data collection. We need even bigger supercomputers and stuff. And he's, he's saying, no, 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 no. We, a couple of computers and a smart program will perform a lot better than proliferating more and more and more variety in the wrong part of the system. And just as neurons within the human brain are connected by synapses, the Earth itself would become a single neural network.